Welcome back to another video. My name's Carl Gosling and I thought again, whilst I've got the G27 on the GT Omega Classic wheel stand out, I'd do a comparison between the wheel stand and the play seat challenge. Two sort of budget entry systems into sim racing, one where you supply your own chair and one that comes with a chair itself. And because you can, you can pick both of these setups up for almost exactly the same money second hand. Uh, the play seat challenge is a little more if you're going brand new, but there's, there's no real need to because there's plenty out there on the second hand market. So the question is, what's better? A wheel stand or a fold away play seat? Now the wheel stand does fold away as well, but it's a bit ball achy. And to be honest, this folds away a lot easier. So let's go through the pros and cons of both. The most obvious difference is one has a built-in chair and one doesn't. And this for me is a massive deal. Not just because you don't have to adjust the posi posi position of your seat every time, like you do with this. Like I mentioned in my review of the, of the wheel stand, every time you get in this to race, you have to adjust your seat, which is like getting in your car every day and some motherfuckers come in and move your seat around. You just never find that sweet spot again. It's just never the same. And that's a little bit of a ball ache. Whereas with the play seat challenge, the seat hasn't moved. You get in it, you sit down, and it's in your favorite seat in position, your favorite driving position, and it will always be in your favorite driving position. So that is a big plus for the play seat challenge from my point of view. Uh, the second thing that I'm gonna say is the biggest deal between the two is the amount of wobble in these wheel bases and the overall rigs themselves. Again, if you watch the review of this, it wobbles like mad from side to side. You know, that's, that's, a, real, that's a real wobble on. Um, if I just, I don't know whether you'll see this or not, but when you're, well, in fact, when you're sat in it, I wanna get in it and show you because having your weight sort of hold it in position makes a big difference. So once you're in, there is almost no side to side movement and I'm applying a fair bit of force now and it's barely moving side to side. Whereas this thing wobbles like crazy and even with your feet resting on it, it doesn't make any difference. It's these upright adjustable sections that allow for this movement and that's what causes a problem. So rigidity, much, much better in the play seat challenge. Driving position, as you can see, I'm sat here, the wheels at a nice height, the shifter's in a nice place, the seat's exactly where I left it, better. So driving position's good, Rigidity and flex, good, or so better position, better rigidity and flex than the, than the wheel stand. Um, you can probably see where this video is going, to be honest, can't you? But we're gonna carry on anyway, because that's why you're all here. So, so far it's two to the play seat challenge and nothing to the GT Amiga wheel stand. So, what's the next thing to look at? We looked at the seating position, we looked, okay, shifter positions. The shifter position, this doesn't actually come with a shift amount, the play seat challenge, but there are quite a few out there that you can buy afterwards. It does add extra to the cost. The one I'm using isn't actually an official uh, product, um, but it works just fine. It was about 15 quid, I think. It's actually like a, a Visa monitor, monitor stand, or VESA monitor stand, however you pronounce it. But it clamps right on, it works perfectly for a Logitech shifter. There'll be a link to one of those in the description if you need one. Um, so this doesn't come with one, this does. So I suppose that's a plus, really, to the GT Omega wheel stand. It comes with two different shift amounts, actually. The one you see here, and the one that comes at the bottom and comes up. So you get two options about where you want to put your shifter. I suppose that really is a positive in favor of this, and that comes in within the price as well. Uh, so yeah, all right, that's one to, the, one to the GT Omega, two to the play seat. And uh, let's move further down then, shall we, towards the ground. As far as adjustment for the pedal deck goes, neither of them have adjustable pedal deck angles, but the play seat allows you to adjust your pedal deck in, let's just move this chair out of the way because it's pissing me off, move the, uh, the pedal deck in and out. So whereas this, you can move your seat backwards and forwards and you can adjust the wheel height, the wheel height and how far it sticks out adjusts as one. So 
if you want to get, let's say you've got short legs and you want to get closer to those pedals, you have to drop the height of the wheel deck down as you slide it further in. Now you might say if you're a short person that probably makes sense anyway, which it probably does. So it may find, you may find a natural equilibrium with that anyway. But with a play seat, you can literally put the pedals as far in, that's actually out, or as far in or as far out as you would like. Because some people like to drive, you know, legs all the way out. Other people like to drive with them much more bent. So you've got the option to do that with the play seat challenge. You can lock the little screws down to hold it in place and it does stay there. You could possibly get a little bit of left to right movement um, with that, but I can't say I've experienced it, but just looking at it, there's no sort of lateral support side to side. But I can't say I've had it happen. In fact, I really can't complain about the play seat challenge at all. And having used both of these, this I've had for two years, this I've had for six months or so, and my full cockpit that's out of view there, I've had for over a year now as well. So I've got a fair bit of experience with all of these different variations. Um, and I think really, in conclusion, the answer to the question is the play seat challenge pretty much is better in every way than a wheel stand. The only other thing, of course, we haven't spoken about is how compact they are when they fold up. Um, and I'd say they're pretty much the same as far as the amount of space they take up. Again, go watch the review of this to see this one folded up. I'm not gonna do it again now because people get bored watching the same old stuff. Go check it out, you'll see how that folds up. Go watch the review of the play seat challenge and see how that folds up. They both have the same footprint essentially once they're folded. It's just the play seat challenge is a little taller. And of course, height is never really gonna be the issue when you're thinking about throwing it in a cupboard or behind a sofa or in the corner of a room somewhere. It's that, it's that width and depth that really makes the difference. So as far as I'm concerned, the best buy out of the bunch, if you're looking for a budget secondhand or brand new sort of racing rig come wheel stand, come fold away seat set up. It's definitely got to be the play seat challenge. It takes up no room, no more room than the GT Omega uh, Apex um, classic wheel stand. It's far more rigid. It's far more comfortable to sit in because you've got a proper chair versus whatever random chair you have. The, the driving position is infinitely better. As I say, rigidity, flex, all better on the play seat challenge. This is a wobbly motherfucker. You have to use a crappy chair with a cushion. Um, it just doesn't really do it for me, to be honest, having, having used and experienced all of them. I mean, they're all better than a desk, don't get me wrong. But, uh, but if you're going to spend 70, 80 pounds second hand, grab these. And to be honest, you'll often find both the Play Seat Challenge and the GT Omega Classic coming with a G920, a G27. Again, I did a video comparing these two as well, if you want to check that out. Um, you know, these are all the sort of entry level um, low end type stuff that more people will be interested in. You know, I could be here reviewing two and a half grand shifters like Barry at Sim Racing Garage does. But the problem with that is there's only a handful of you guys that are interested in that. Most of us, people who have, you know, normal lives and normal budgets are looking at things like this, especially to get us going in the first place. So that's why I'm doing these, these sort of videos. And you can get a lot out of these as well with a few tweaks and a few little add-ons and a bit of customization. So there's lots more of that to come um, on my channel. We're gonna do a, a custom load cell upgrade to the Logitech pedals. No, it's not the Rick Motec one, which is what you all probably assume. Um, there is a cheaper way of doing it. Um, and I'll show you guys how to do that in another video. Um, we're gonna do a Pimp My Play Seat Challenge video where I fit as many accessories to this play seat as I can possibly think of. Digital dashboards, tactile transducers, wind simulation, the whole lot, just to see what you can really do with something as entry level as this and as compact as this, and even still be able to fold it all away. Um, this is probably the last you'll see of the G27 and this wheel stand. Oh, the only thing about this wheel stand, of course, is upgradability is in its favor. You can slot an arse end in with a proper seat on if you want, but it's still gonna be a wobble fest. So yeah, to conclude the video and stop waffling, my money goes with the play seat challenge. Um, there are plenty of bargains out there. So if you're looking for a compact foldable setup, don't go with the wheel stand, go with the play seat challenge. That's my two pence worth. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Take it easy.